Hey, 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 welcome back. It's the Lavelda Show, Women of Power. And today's guest, listen, when it comes to diversity and inclusion, networking is one of the big things that we know potentially gets in the way of people from diverse backgrounds being able to access some of the most important resources and make their way up the corporate ladder or whatever ladder it is they're looking to go up. And so today's guest is a specialist in both networking and diversity and inclusion. As a diverse nurse, CEO of Dawn Jarvis, please welcome Dawn Jarvis. Hiya, nice to be here. Hey girlfriend, hey. So tell me, how did you end up, well firstly, what is a diverse nurse? How is that different to a normal nurse? So um, I'm a nurse by background and I specialised in children's and adult nursing and I worked in the NHS um, in England for 35 years and I did quite a lot of things. I had a portfolio career, I was a manager, I was a commissioner of health services and I ended up working for in a corporate role looking at uh, regulating services. So um, that's diverse, so I did lots of diverse things. I also got an interest in diversity and inclusion um, because um, I'm a plaque nurse and um, working in quite a large bureaucratic organisation um, that, that it's really important to be able to, um, there's lots of different patients, there's lots of diversity in professions, there's lots of diversity in patients and treatment. So that's why I call myself the diverse nurse because it's, um, it's, it's diversity in every sort of way. In I love that. So you, you're really referring to diversity in terms of the background and the various different things that you covered, but also diversity in terms of the people that you work with and yourself. Yes. So how did you how did you end up going from diversity to networking? Because I understand your journey through the NHS and in the medical profession was the result of really clever networking? Yeah, so um, I specialised before I left the health service in working with um, black nurses who wanted to go th um, up the career ladder and, and sort of mentoring them and supporting them and coaching them to do that. And the question I was asked is that how did I get into my position? And um, having sort of like really thought about that, what was the process? And it was through networking. So I, um, I did a course, which was the management course, management leadership course, and they encouraged encouraged me to find a mentor and um, that mentor really supported me to get other roles and to try different things and those different things were like sort of telling people what sort of job I wanted, what sort of area I wanted to be in, to role model, best practice and to, to do that. But to do that you have to find the people, find like-minded people and people who are willing, willing to help you and then to be part of that community and that has helped me to get um, it helped me in the NHS and it's helped me um, in my new sort of I moved on to being a business owner and it's helped me in that because I sort of I looked at my networks and then asked people that I knew had expertise in that sort of area um, you know what are you looking for you know what are the best things to do and then develop mentoring relationships with them and then those opportunities then come through um, I am trying to through my um, I'm writing a book around um, networking and sort of I'm trying to sort of standardize the process around it because um, I wouldn't say I, I, I do it quite naturally but there is a method um, to do that so that's what that's about. And how important do you, I mean, we talk a lot about the importance of networks and how important do you think it is for people, how important do you think somebody's network is when we pair network and diversity and inclusion? Because we also know that in organisations, the NHS is no different. If you look at those who are the nurses, the janitors, the cooks, the, you know, at that sort of um, the secretaries, if you look at those individuals and what their faces look like and yeah. their backgrounds and you compare yeah. that to the surgeons and uh -huh. you know the much more senior people and the, the directors, those sorts of individuals, there's a real disparity. So how important do you think networking is in helping to break down some of those barriers so that at all levels of organisations we're seeing that diversity? So I think that, that networking can work both ways. I think um, there's research that shows that to have a diverse organisation means you have a more effective and productive and um, financially a viable organisation. That's really, really important. So it's really important to have a diverse 
um, workforce, um, which is something I'm really interested in. And you know, you're right. You know, the people at the top of an organisation look very similar in and how they um, and you know that and you know you're more likely in the NHS to be successful if you're male and um, if you're white so you know there's things to be learned and I've, I've had mentors who are white men as well as um, mentors who are white women but I've also had mentors who have got to um, the position that I wanted to get to so you know that's that's the that's what I would recommend that people find someone who is doing what they want to do so I did that both in my career as a nurse and also in my business I'm, I, I work with I've got a mentor who's got a diversity and inclusion business and I, I literally I watched her speak um, her name's Carmen Morris and I sort of said you know I want to really get into that it's not my area of expertise but that's what I want to do and she very I offered to pay her but she very kindly mentored me so you know and that's been really really helpful when we're doing some joint projects now so so that's how networking works for me. And when you're, you meant you touched on it a little bit, when you're thinking of your network, do we need to create diversity in our individual networks? Because you've said like you've had, you've had a variety of different faces, backgrounds, experiences who've mentored you and allowed you to be able to create those connections. Are there some kind of key categories we should be looking at when it comes to building our networks to be able to reach our goals? Yeah, definitely. I think, first of all, you should look at who's in your personal network, your family, your friends, your colleagues, um, people that are your bosses or people you would like to be your bosses. And sometimes, and then it's around mapping it and seeing you know, what's missing, what, what are the gaps? And then, you know, do, and it, the, there may be some different people that you don't know, and then um, you need to find a way, sort of like, what's the key to the door? You know, then you need to find, you know, how can you help those people? Because um, I think sort of mentorship and sort of networking, it's a reciprocal arrangement. Um, you get something, so the mentor gets something as well as the as the, as the mentee, and I think that's the way to look at it. So if um, a white male um, gets approached by me, he's going to get just as much from me as I'm going to get from them, and that's the way to see it. There's lots of in the NHS. There's lots of standards around um, workforce race equality and you know diversity, and that, it's a way to make it work. And so you can say, you know, this will benefit the organisation. I work with organisations who have diversity standards and targets and sort of like mentoring someone, networking with someone. There's a thing called reverse mentoring where an executive will work with the, 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 um, a chef. And, you know, I've worked with organisations that they do a reciprocal arrangement. It needs support and, you know, I've sp spoken um, to um, networking groups around, you know, um, how can I be a mentor? Because I think you have to develop your own, you know, to be a good mentor, there's a skill to it and there's things that you need to learn. But um, and also to be a mentee, you have to be, it's a bit like coaching, you have to be coachable. So you have to, I don't think there's a, a verb for mentorable, but you know, that, you know, you know you maybe I've been to it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that you have to, you know, what, you know, what do you want to get out of it? What is your long term goal? And, you know, I think there's nothing more um the, the greatest gift is you can give someone is your attention and so and also people you know when people have asked me to mentor them i've been sort of very flattered around that so you know and that sort of like increases your network so as you go on so um when i started as a business owner i was looking for consultancy work i i um I asked to speak to one of my old mentors from 15 years ago, one of the original mentors that someone suggested I get. And um, she's still a chief exec of an organization and said, you know, I'm looking to get diversity and inclusion work. What would you be looking for in uh, as regards to diversity and inclusion? And then, you know, then she and introduced me to some other people in her network and that's and that led to some work. So, you know, that's how it goes. Sounds like there's a degree of humbleness required. <laughs> Because to go to somebody and because almost sometimes in a networking space, look, I'll be honest with you, Dawn, I'm a level. I hate networking events. <laughs> yes, of I had somebody come to me yes. only a few days ago, slid into my DMs yes. and suggested I she's got this event and would I come along to yes. it? And I just had to hold my hands up and say, honestly, I really I don't really get down with networking events in that kind of yeah. traditional sense and the primary reason for it is i get into those spaces feeling like it's one salesperson selling mm -hmm. another salesperson mm -hmm. and nobody's listening mm -hmm. there isn't really a dialogue 
So how do you engage in those conversations so you can build a network that actually supports you? Because there's a di I used to say there's a difference between knowing a lot of people, but it's who knows you, like who can you call on that's yeah. actually going to yeah. remember your name, remember your face, want to give you that one asset they cannot recoup, which is their time. That's right. So what do we do to create networks that actually support and uplift us towards our goals as opposed to what you were saying, oh, what can I get? How do you know, going in with asks all mm. the time, like I kind of get a sense of some sort of humbleness. What are we so, missing? So I, um, I never knew networking events were a thing. I honestly, and I think it's because I worked in the health service. I just didn't know they existed. I now know that there are companies that have networking events and, and networking lunches. I just thought that's nice, have some breakfast with people. But um, I have never gone into any, any situation thinking of what I'm going to get. I think it's really important not to be salesy, not to be pushy for want of a, a better word. It's sort of like go expecting nothing and you never know what's gonna you never know what's gonna happen. I'm very easy around networking. I think it's around building relationships. Um, I never think of the ask. Um, you know, I know what my own goals and visions, and I think it's really important to be open about that. Um, but I'm not, I'm not, so with my chief executive, I didn't say, oh, can you give me a job, please? Um, because I've never had a job before and it'd be really good for me and it looked really good on my CV. I did get a job though, but you know, that's, I helped her with a little project that just came from nowhere. Um, it was around COVID-19 actually, and the black staff in her organization. I did that little job and then something else came up. So, and that's how it works. Also, um, I do speaking, which is, um, you know, something I, you know, I would do for free. And, you know, I found that when you do a speaking engagement, people want to talk to you, they want to network with you. And, you know, there are other things around. So by being available, I have never gone to a speaking engagement and said, I am selling my thing. I don't know how to do that actually. But what has happened is that I do a speaking engagement and then people go, oh, you know, you're, you know you'd be a good person to know. I could introduce you to so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so. and then something has always happened after every speaking engagement. So for me, it's a, it's quite a fluid process. I'm not a very ordered person, um, but you know, I, I know that you, you know, I, I like to, I've got a phrase, I don't like to leave a hand unshaken. I like to, you know, if you, if somebody reaches out to me, I'll always respond. I might not get there straight away, but I'll always respond. And you never know what's going to happen and you know, what opportunities. And I think also when I meet people, I always think, oh, oh, I met so-and-so wherever. Oh, they might be good for that. And that might be, so I do it too. So you're, you're doing the same thing. You're being, a men you're being mentored you're a mentee, you're referring people on and people are referring you on. Um, and I know you from Clubhouse and I, I just went on there because I like chatting. And you know, I've got a gig next week, which was just from chatting on Clubhouse. And yeah. the person remembered me and um, reached out to me and next week I'm doing doing something for her. And that's the way that's the way it works. It's it's been very successful. And my business, you know, I started it from nothing and it's been it's very successful. So you know, so it works. So that's why and I think when you're thinking about your superpowers, that, that's one of mine, engaging people, building a relationship with people and seeing what you can do for them rather than what they can do for you if in the first instance. And then these things just evolve. Sounds like there's some real core principles to the networking. It's not networking in the, in the sense in which yeah. we often think of it, yeah. which is this really strategic thing where, and it's how it was taught to me, you know, you go in and I was like, I ain't got time for this. No, going in, handing out, handing out your business, business cards. No. I like you, I don't like you, it goes somewhere, yeah. it doesn't go somewhere. But what I love in what you said is that it's a reciprocal process. So it's not a matter of Dawn connecting for what she can get from something, mm -hmm. but connecting to see what the opportunities may be yeah. now or in the future. And sometimes the opportunities for you and sometimes it's an opportunity for you to give, mm -hmm. but being in that space. Mm -hmm. As you were speaking, it reminds me about when people speak about social media and yes. they say, oh, it's social, yes. you know, it's not about getting yes. out there and just yes. banging on about yes. what you're up to. It's yes. actually about engaging Absolutely. in the community. And being interested, you know, I think, to, to be interested in what people are up to, what they're doing in their 
in their spare time, you know, who are their family and friends, their children. And I think people struggle, because I've heard this before, oh, you know, I'm not a network, I don't like it. I've heard people, I love social media, don't, I love it. But, you know, some people really struggle with it. And for me, it's just nosiness, you know, and, and being interested and, you know, um, being, and then, you know, it's like, I like to know lots of people. And also, um, as I mainly work at home now, and I used to work in an office, I loved working in an office, but, you know, social media and networking, whether that's online or in person, is what my social now. So I, I don't really see it as, as hard work. Um, um, I see it as com building community and sort of like, you know, these are all parts of my community. I live in London and, you know, that it can be um, quite an isolating place unless you've got other things like children or, you know, family or friends. And my family live in the north of England. So um, so this is how, that's how I, how I do it. That's how I do it and that, you know, and making a business out of it is great. What I've just taken is build, you know, become genuinely curious. Yeah, absolutely. People used to say to me, why do you interview people? I said, partially because I'm just darn nosy, yeah, to be absolutely. honest with you. Yeah. I want to know your business. I want to know everyone's business. I want to get, you've got to get up in people's business, absolutely. ask a bunch of questions, but from a genuine yeah. space of curiosity. Yeah. So Dawn, I'd be amiss not to ask you certain questions in relation to power. After all, this is yes. the Women of Power show. Yes. And we bring on powerful women to discuss what's been working for them and mm -hmm. why and unveil, you know, some of the who they are. Mm -hmm. And you've done a lot of stuff in the NHS, a very male dominated space. You've built a name for yourself. You've left, started your own successful business and done that off the back of your your network it's not that you came from a lot it's that you use the people around you Absolutely. or you engaged with people yeah. around you in order to make that successful so for you what is it that you think is the essence of what makes a woman powerful you know you're in the space of diversity yes. we've got men we've got women we've got stuff in between you know for those of you who are non-binary yes. um but what is it that you believe makes a woman powerful i think women are powerful because they work together and that's related to the networks as well. They're passionate about what they do. They have a mission about what they do, whether that's their family, whether that's their career, whether that's their business. They are mission driven. You know, I spoke to a friend yesterday and she said, you know, I'm all about inequalities. And I was like, yeah, so am I. And you know, and you know, like-minded people find each other. And so they're passionate about what they do. They want to, and they want to help each other as sisters, as women, you know, both personally and professionally. And as, like I said, I don't live near my family, but I have a, a core of women. I call them the Wembley women, actually, I live in Wembley. And, you know, we call them you know, the Wembley Wonder Women. And, you know, they are, you know, they are my, they are my family. They're the people that I can call when, you know, um, I need to, uh, I'm in a different part of the country and my, and my daughter needs some help or, you know, they're the people that are there for me. So I think that it's about um, being passionate being driven and also they've been supporting people it's that natural ability to nurture it's almost yes. instinctive in yeah. us that we just want to yeah. kind of be around people and, and that's be a power. nurturing that's a superpower and i, think and I love that, that you see that as a as a power it's kind of like when people say it's vulnerability and that's yeah. what they see as women's strength yeah. because i think sometimes we can look at some of these facets of being female and see them as a as a problem or something that we need to to um to brush away no. like you know why would you, you need so to embrace it em uh, embrace your nurturing <laughs> nature yes. i love it look at that all yes. those ends so dawn <laughs> you, i mean there'll be people listening who were like okay it's right for dawn it's all right for dawn she's a natural net worker she's one of these people got the gift of the gab loves to have a good chit chat with people but here's why I ask the next question, because I think there's always something that we can learn from other people. And so what I'm kind of curious about is for you, if we were to take everything that you've ever done in your life and business, wait for a big question coming, babe, everything you've ever done in your life and business, and we were to boil it down in a big old pot, just down to three core things that you would say, these are the core things that are absolutely essential critical to the success that that I've had in my life and business. What would those three things be? Let's start with the first one. So I think never leaving in a hand unshaken, sort of being aware of who you meet and remembering something about them and never closing the door on anyone. I think that's really, really important. I like to remember people I've met, where I met them, um, you know, what we've got in common, but also what we haven't got in common, because I think that's interesting. Um, I think 
it's really important to be present um, to give people your attention and to respect that attention um, as well. I can't remember the third thing. I, I think it's, I love that you say those two is like sort of your first and your second, because they kind of interplay with each other, especially mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. in the current landscape where yeah. we've almost been forced to slow down a little bit yeah. and really take stock of what's important to yeah. us. And, and often it's the relationships that we've built and in the busyness of life, it's really easy to forget that. I mean, it, it only takes, it only takes you hitting a low point to see who, mm -hmm to see if your, your time investment in individuals actually pays off. That's when you get to reap it. You get yeah. to see, did it actually pay off? And unfortunately for a lot of us, we get to learn we invested in the wrong people at the mm. wrong, you know, they, they just were not as invested in getting to know us. Yeah. So I love that you say it's, it's really taking a genuine interest in people because yes. those are the people you yes. remember. And it's taking that time to, to give people your attention. Put them phones down, folks. Stop multitasking. Yes, and be, and be in the moment and be present. And I think, yeah, that's really, really important. And in doing that, you will then find out the people that um, the people that you don't want to spend any more time with. You, these will become very that will become very, very apparent really, really quickly. And who are like people who align with your values will become also apparent really, really quickly. And then and you will pursue those relationships. And the third thing is around community. Um, you know, everything I'm about is around community and around so the diversity in, in communities. The inequality that there is there some time in, 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 in my community and in other communities. And I think, you know, I'm very much around um, people being educated around people knowing, you know, what's good for their health and what, you know, and you know, what their well-being. Because it's not just around and people just think about physical health, but around mental health, particularly in the pandemic and, you know, how that is. And so, you know, that and what I've learned during the pandemic is how important community is, like, you know, how important my Wembley women are, my, my friends and my family, now that I don't go to work every day, you know, who are the people that I can rely on, who are the people I can call on. So it's around developing community and that sort of get that sort of links very nicely back to the networking you've given me like a really new take on networking because I think it's very easy to think of networking as something we do for business mm -hmm. and not even necessarily something that we just do for our own personal health and well-being mm -hmm. spiritual growth Absolutely. ability to just enjoy life yeah. and something like a pandemic or any sort of major life event will give you an insight into how much time you've actually invested in genuinely meeting other people. And it's very easy to just not put that time in. So what would you say to people who maybe feel a bit conflicted with networking or networking like me, you know, the, the <laughs> chick who's just like, I don't do networking <laughs> events, babe, I ain't interested, it ain't for me, I ain't doing it. What would you say to those individuals that might have them think a little bit differently about what networking is and what impact it could have, not just for their life, but potentially also for their business. So I, I say networking is, is around, it's for your life, it's for your career, it's for your business. And I, I wouldn't see it as um, a chore. I would see it as getting to know some people and it would be good for them to be in your personal network. And I think really, if you look at really successful people, you know, be that politicians or, you know, millionaires or multimillionaires, they have a network of people around them that support them. So your network could be your team, your network could be your family, your friends, and it's around, you know, knowing who, who is around you. I personally, um, you know, I, I find just talking to people, then, you know, they may or they may not become part of your network, but, you know, it's just, it's around talking. So I wouldn't say, oh, let's go to a networking event. You know, it, it sounds it sounds awful, actually, you know, but, and, and I wouldn't get up for a networking breakfast anyway, but, you know, I would sort of like, you know, when you meet someone at the local shop or walking down the road, say hello, because you never know, you never know what's going to happen. And that has happened to me so many times. You never Know, you know what opportunities what who's going to ring you who's gonna who's gonna say oh I was thinking about you and um, somebody somebody that I coached for for quite a low cost you know came back to me today and said oh you know, you know I've got my first 
um, you know, um, sisters posts, like ward managers posts. I'm like, that's great, that's fantastic. And that, that person will be an advocate for me going forward. And that's that's the way it works. You know, you sort of, um, if, you, if you give out, you'll receive it back tenfold, you know, so. It's not all about taking, folks. No, it's, it's about giving, giving and absolutely. taking. Yeah. And if you had one last message, like a little closing note that you'd want to leave everybody with today, there's just one thing that people take from this delightful, delicious converse conversation. <laughs> what should it be? I think, I think never be embrace your opportunities. Like every time you meet a different person, you you never know what's going to come out of that. So see everything as very exciting and full of potential. You never know what's going to happen. Oh, I love it. Embrace the opportunities because you never know what's going to happen. Dawn, thank you so much You're for welcome. joining today. I mean, you've certainly gi given me a little bit of a head turn in terms of how I will think about networking. And just one last thing, in terms of the book, when is it out? Where can people get it? By the way, if you're listening on the podcast, if you're on YouTube, just scroll down. It will all be in the show notes. But if you happen to be watching us live. So um, I'm hoping that the book will be available by the beginning of September. And um, we've got a and we, you can pre-order it now at dawnjarvis.com. And we've also got a, a, pre, a sort of summary of the chapters of the book that's available if you also go to dawnjarvis.com dawnjarvis.com for the book. Thank you so much for giving of your time and enlightening me on what networking really is and what it can really do, not just for my business, but also for my life. That brings us to the end of today's episode and we're almost there, don't worry. We've still got one more episode left in the season. If you haven't already checked out the show notes, please do. If you have been loving the show and you have not yet hit that subscribe button or join the mailing list, what is taking you so long, one must ask. Until next time, go out there and invest in your networks because they will, you will be able to reap the rewards in the future. Take care for now and it's ciao from me.